Welcome back guys. Another lovely day here at Carphonics. Today we're working on a 2014 Dodge Ram pickup truck. This gentleman here is getting a navigation unit installed, getting two cameras installed, one for the back of the truck and the tailgate handle, and the other camera is going to get installed on the trailer hitch itself. And the reason for that is because he's planning on bringing his trailer here at a later date and we'll be installing the camera on his trailer on the back end of it as well. So here's what we're working with. We got a uh, dash kit, which is a Metra piece here. Metra 956518B. And uh, we'll go ahead and take you through the installation on that. We got an excess VI module. This truck is pretty basic. Uh, there are no steering wheel controls on it. So we'll just be using this as a data module and for our input outputs. Uh, meaning our reverse trigger uh, navigation outputs and uh, emergency brake. We've got a Kenwood DNX 693S along with a camera CMOS, uh, Kenwood CMOS 230 camera going on the back of the trailer hitch for now. Uh, the camera itself is still in the box that will be getting put on the trailer. Uh, we've just got the uh, harness here which will be running to the back along with our tailgate handled camera here and I'll go ahead and show you that. Here is our tailgate handled camera. It's really nice. Uh, this is from a company called uh, Rostra Precision Controls. Really 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 nice camera and um, has some really nice DIN connectors here with uh, spin on uh, waterproof connectors. Super nice. Uh, their cabling is all super nice as well. So we'll be going ahead and uh, running this from the front to the back along with our other cable for our trailer connector there. This customer has decided to spend the money where it is needed and th that is on quality cameras. Uh, oftentimes you'll get cameras from online like eBay or uh, you know a source like Amazon and it may seem like a fantastic deal at $20 for a camera uh, but in car audio world and in camera world you really get what you pay for. So. Uh, invest your money wisely on cameras because when we're installing this we like to do it just one time I hate having to take out a camera for warranty issues you guys have seen that on previous videos how upsetting that is because we do spend so much time installing this stuff so um, you know purchase quality cameras and you won't have to run into that issue more or less all right so with any camera installation what I generally like to do is uh, loom up all the wiring that goes from the front to the back of the vehicle uh, and in this case because we're doing two cameras I kind of just like to loom everything create a nice connector bundle at the uh, the head unit here and then uh, run it all the way along and just uh, test fit everything here got our connector back here which we'll end up putting a uh, four pin trailer connector on uh, instead of using these connectors here um, we'll end up using some uh, weather pack uh, four pin trailer connectors for the uh, connector that goes to the trailer side and then we just loomed up the uh, wiring here that goes to the tailgate so I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, start taking apart the tailgate of the truck and get things situated here that way we can uh, start to um, well, it's a really nice tailgate um, latch from Lear anyhow so we're gonna go ahead and start removing all this and uh, getting the camera itself installed into the tailgate. All right, so hopefully we're getting the shot here. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, screws in the back of the tailgate here. I wanna make sure you grab all these little stupid plastic washers. This one's stuck on there because of the bed liner. So we will leave it. That one's also stuck as is that one. So we'll leave all those, bunch of screws there, and then this panel will pop off uh, like a so. Just set that to the side. All right, so now the next step is to remove all the bars for the tailgate hatch latch here. And then there's a couple of nine mil screws that are down in here. So you'll get this part removed here. This is the uh, door lock actuator. I'll make sure you unplug that sucker there. And then the uh, tailgate handle itself will just uh, basically pop out of here. You gotta kinda lift the handle and pull it out at the same time. So two hands are required. So here's the uh, factory tailgate handle. And uh, 
We have to remove this uh, lock right here and uh, place it on the other camera handle itself. So a couple of nine mil screws here and uh, here's the panel here. So the other two screws there will go in that little spot. And there that is. All right, so we can go ahead now and uh, reinstall the camera into the tailgate. First by passing the cord through. And then second by very gently being careful not to scratch the paint in behind. Place the tailgate handle camera back into its spot. This piece will slide back in over the top, making sure that you get that little post around the lock as you're reinstalling, like such. Put your two nuts back on, and this job is done. Now you just want to make sure that you plug all this fun jazz back in the way it's supposed to be. Plug only goes in one way. Make sure you reinstall all the uh, bars and actuators. Uh -huh. I screwed up. I have to uh, take this whole thing off again because this bar has to go on top, not below. All right, so a quick second later, everything's all reconnected here and ready to go back. So I'm gonna go ahead and test the actuator. Make sure that it's gonna go ahead and uh, actuate that door lock there. It's going to set you guys there. You should be able to see right around this area here. This actuator should move back and forth. All right. Everything's working just the way it should be. And uh, we're going to go ahead now and start running this cable from the tailgate into the chassis of the vehicle. All right. So we've got the uh, cable ran. Everything all hooked up here. We tested the lock. And uh, we got the cable ran through the tailgate and up to this point here. As you can see, I've loomed the wire here just for extra protection down the line. Uh, the customer does have the ability to unplug and uh, unscrew this connector here if he decides to remove the tailgate. So we can go ahead now and uh, replace this panel and uh, move on. So the next step that we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to use some zip ties and uh, some side cutters and go ahead and route our cabling. So we'll take in and this vehicle and see what we can show you. Okay, so over here, I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not, got our cable right here. And that sucker's right there, and we're going to go ahead and uh, start routing our cabling for our backup camera. This bad boy can get plugged in, and uh, we'll end up routing this somewhere uh, along the frame rail, kind of like the factory would, and uh, that way, you know, it's not going to get in the way of any moving parts underneath of the vehicle. This can get bunched up as well. There's actually a bunch of extra cabling here that we're gonna have to kind of loom up and 
bundle up here nicely for the customer. Because we're looking for this end here, and that's going to go somewhere along the trailer hitch there, guys, somewhere like that. And uh, we'll go from there. So we got our initial cable routing organization going on here. Well, everything's routed, and now I'm just uh, working on seeing if you guys can see what the hell I'm looking at here. Uh, routing this along the uh, frame rail, along the uh, factory wiring. Alright, so I'm not sure which part of that, if any of that, you guys saw, but uh, basically it runs along the frame rail here, and up along here, and then uh, we're going to be going through this factory grommet right there. Uh, not sure if you guys can see that or not, but uh, there is one right in this area right here through the floor, so and my cabling is uh, right here. So, run through the floor, and uh, that's the next step. Alright, so we got the cable right inside the vehicle at this point here. Use that factory grommet that's in the floor, and uh, it's plastic, so you actually have to uh, kind of wallow it out a little bit to get the cable through. If you guys can see that there, I've just dynamited over top of the wire to seal everything up from the inside to the outside. And then I'll show you what's going on underneath here. Shining some light on that situation for you, just like that. Through a factory grommet, nicely loomed and sealed. Okay, so the uh, next step in the process here for me before I just start disassembling the dash is to go ahead and prep our harness, dash kit, radio into the dash kit, get our antenna adapter all ready to go. Uh, we'll start taking apart the dash, modify it because there is a small little piece that has to be cut out behind the radio there in order for the radio to go in. And uh, quick little blurb here, if you guys uh, want to check that out, look forward to that in the next couple of videos. That's going to be our new shop car, which is going to be pretty awesome. Uh, we're picking that bad boy up and doing one of an audio system in it. So one of the first things I'd like to do is just uh, open up our box here and uh, get our harnessing all ready to go. And uh, this one here is just uh, basically a basic harness here. We're not doing steering wheel controls, so we'll clean up this harness quite a bit. Get it wired to this one here, and uh, I'll show you what that's all about. Alrighty, so we got our uh, data harness all hooked up here, data module. Uh, a little bit of test of tape here, obviously all heat shrunk and soldered. And I uh, got our power connections here for our camera. Everything's ready to go. So uh, the next step is to get the dash assembled with the radio. And then after that, we'll go ahead and get our GPS antennas mounted, USBs installed, and our Bluetooth mic. And we'll be able to head out the dash and get everything installed there. Okay, so our radio is in our dash kit. Uh, we prepared our wires back here as well as our antenna adapter. Harness is ready to go. Next step is taking apart the dash and getting all those peripherals mounted. First step in removing the dash of this bad boy, there's a couple of little uh, torque screws underneath this panel here. This just comes out like that. And then you can take your screwdriver, get her in there and start removing those screws. After that, quite literally, the entire panel just pops off like that. And then you can go ahead and start removing all your connectors. And after that whole panel's been removed, all your connectors have been released, you can go ahead and set that in the back seat, just be real careful with that. And uh, then we got a bunch of 7mm screws here that uh, will remove the radio. Hope you guys can make that out there, but that shaded area there and over there need to be cut out with an air saw. <laughs> Done. All right, Bluetooth mic, navigation, backup camera, USBs, everything's been ran. Go ahead and ready to plug this radio in and uh, give her all a whirl. All right, so we got our keys here. Gonna go ahead and uh, 
try this out. Looks really nice in the dash there. So you go ahead, turn the ignition on, wait for the module to initiate and turn the radio on. Should take somewhere between, you know, five to 10 seconds there. And uh, once the CAN bus module starts speaking to the radio, it should turn on. And I'm going to try shutting off the ignition and then turn the ignition back on. There we go. Perfect. Just initialization of the module to the uh, truck. Just needs to start speaking to the CAN bus system before we uh, get our ignition power to turn the radio on and off. And we'll do our initial setup here with the radio. Get everything uh, set up and then I'll actually plug in the camera that's supposed to be going on the trailer at a later date just so you guys can see the variation between the two. So we're just going to switch from the United States and back to Canada here. There we go. Boom. Uh, language, obviously English. Color, we'll leave that for now. Camera, we want the rear interruption on. We want the front camera on as well. And we'll go ahead and just make sure everything is good to go. We'll turn off our parking guidance lines because the camera already has those built in and it's specific to this car, so that's good. We'll finish up our install, press agree, and go ahead and slam her into reverse. So we got our backup camera image there. And uh, quickly just let me plug in the uh, Kenwood camera. So just temporarily taking the camera out of the package here and I've left the wire right there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, just temporarily connect this. Just so I can test it out there. Just leave the camera dangling somewhat like that. And uh, we'll go ahead and fiddle with the settings here and get the uh, camera to work. Boom. So we'll go home, go here, press the volume knob, camera. And there's our backup camera for the uh, trailer itself. Real nice clear image. That camera, like I said, will later on be going on to the, uh, will later on be going to the uh, rear view, like the, how the hell do I say this? The, uh, the trailer, the trailer. Go ahead and throw it in reverse. That camera comes on, and then if we want to watch the other camera, we'll just go ahead and press the camera there, and uh, the front camera will come on. So just quickly to show you there, if you want to switch between the cameras while you're in reverse, you just go ahead and press the camera button here, and uh, it'll switch over between front and rear cameras. Oopsie daisies, camera, rear camera. Oh God camera front camera rear camera front camera rear camera there we go you press down here brings you back back to the menu anyhow guys so hopefully you guys have uh, enjoyed that installation you understand what's going on make sure you look for part number two and if you haven't checked out any of the videos from last week or this week make sure you check those out along the description bar here or in the uh, video description make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you soon keep that Philly on a drilly boys